Welcome to the Penny Bloom Podcast. Ain't another place that has got more bomb bass. Rump past your mom, dad's listening to Tomcats. Talking everything that make you sad. We don't want that. We're here to make you smile. Put your mind at ease. Peace, love, and bloom. And always praise Keanu Reeves. This what we about. Get some weed in now. We'll talk until we can't no more. And then we peace and out. All right, let's go. Penny Bloom Podcast. It's the Penny Bloom Podcast. Penny Bloom Podcast. Hello, everybody, and welcome in to another episode of the Penny Bloom Podcast. Tis I, Colton Robertson, and we are continuing our 52-year journey through film. I am joined by Joseph George. What's up, homie? What up, what up? Always a pleasure to be here. Oh, and it's always a pleasure to have you and joining us again for what feels like the fourth week in a row. Is it or third week? 87, 88, 89, but four and five, four out of five because Breakfast Club. He was only not here for aliens. Tavares yeah. Pennington. Well, oh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you for the extended introduction. No, I was just doing the math out loud. I'm a little big. Um <laughs> So it was it was just going to take me a second to get there. Now, nah, today we're talking 1989's Dead Poets Society. Uh, we've gone all the way through the 70s, all the way through the 80s, here to the last year in the 80s. We're almost to the 90s, guys. It's crazy. Uh, Damn. We're almost yeah. ready for another decade award thing? Yep. Like, already? I'm thinking if we get this wrapped up in about an hour, we might be able to just go... <laughs> right into it if mm-hmm. y'all, if y'all are down maybe but dead poet society let me lay the groundwork for the people here we're in we're in the year 1989 release date june 9th 1989 written by tom shulman directed by peter weir uh god damn uh i think this is the saddest movie we've had so far at least it's up there. Like, there are certain tragedies amongst our other 19 movies. Yeah, it's just kind of one of the saddest movies there are. Out yeah. There. <laughs> just, yeah, I guess a metric that we can base this off of is if I could collect my tears for every movie that I've watched, you know, so far. Like, this one filled up. It's quite above. It's above uh, every every other <laughs> film. That's for sure on this list. Um, I cried like a baby in this movie. Well, and um, it, so. it does such a good job of setting you up for something that you you just don't expect. Like, you don't expect it to get so real so quickly. Like, mm. you're just like, oh, it's just some boys at a boys' school. Yeah, it's got that, it's just got that tone yeah. where they're all just, they're just kind of hanging out, going through the struggles of this prep school shit they've got going on. You know, t- typical shit. And then it's just like, right. well, sometimes... You never know what someone's dealing with. And that's kind mm-hmm. of like, that's just kind of the the point of the movie. Like, none of them saw that coming. None of them would have thought that would happen, but it did. And it's yeah. like, ah, uh, it's just devastating. Yeah, no, it is. And I think that it, part of the reason it um, resonates on an emotional level for people is because it's, um, in some sense not a relatable movie at first and it brings it it brings it around in in a strong way like it literally it starts with oh you're rich you you know you're like these these kids are future bankers lawyers all of that like they know what what what's set out for in their life and you're just like oh t- like that's that's a situation i wish i could have but then you realize yeah i don't relate to any of these guys uh at first yeah (laughs) at first yeah and then they they universalize that position so well like and it's 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 unexpected in it in that way which is i think a strong Hmm. bit of it it's it's not like a uh like a breakfast club where there's already like a character kind of immediately that you could relate to you know maybe like not one of them all the way, but like mixes off rip, a couple yeah, of like, them. Yeah, like off rip, you're like, okay, like you know who this character is. like, And you know you generally valid. where you'd fit into those categories. Yeah, but but this movie, like you kind of just, they start off as just like this big group. 
Yeah, it's one category rich, of a yeah, rich, rich white guy. White guy. Yeah. And then like they finally break down and like like you get to know who they are and I don't know, it's like a whole different dynamic. And, for and the that's movie. such a hard thing for you to get me to do is mm. like a bunch of rich white kids. Um and I like I like some of these characters, you know. Some of them I'm like genuinely like these are good these are good people. You know what I'm saying? They got yeah. me to care about them. And uh like I mean Neil was a fantastic fantastic character played by uh uh Robert Sean Leonard, Todd Anderson played by Ethan Hawke. And I mean like fucking Knox Overstreet fucking loved that kid. Mm. Um but oh, yeah, no. it's a it's just a and I mean not to mention obviously Robin Williams as Professor Keating or Dr. Keating or Mr. Mm-hmm. Keating whatever. He uh that's that's quite the that's quite the teacher. You know what I'm saying? Oh, yeah. I'd be I'd be quite enthralled with po- uh poetry class. I mean, I I already quite dig poetry in general, but you know, if you have him teaching it, I'm, I'm I guarantee you I'm there. You know? Oh yeah. man. It's 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 probably the only example that the institution has seen of what experiential learning might look like. Hmm. Yeah, his, his teaching met like you already just knew, like, oh, new professor as Robin Williams. You were like, all right, this dude's already gonna rock. Like, this dude's just gonna be awesome. Um, and I, I like no idea what this movie was about before i hopped in at all ah so this was Um, a first viewing for you yeah first viewing um and i see robin williams come up and i'm like you know this movie had a it was pretty serious but i'm like okay maybe it takes a funny turn you know maybe like this is like a funny robin williams movie you know and obviously you know i got i it was made pretty clear that this was not a, a a comedy uh um but you know like just his first lecture, like when he takes them all out in the hall, he's like, all right, come on, you know, come on, what are you waiting for? And he's just talking to him with the pictures and the trophy cases. And like, like that's, that's what you want out of a teacher. You know, you don't, you don't just want the same, same old, same old, whatever you want, like your teacher to inspire you. And you want like to legitimately want to come to class every day and having like a professor like this would just like, it's a dream professor. Like he's, Oh, I mean, the, it's not only like a dream teacher to have, but it's like one of the best and most inspiring movies there is, period, just because of the way he makes you feel while you're watching it. You're just kind of like, yeah. fuck, man, I do. I do got to seize the day. I can't I can't pass up on this opportunity. What am I what am I doing? You know what I'm saying? Like he he gets you thinking and i think that's it's it's rare from a teacher to get that to get that going for you and it's it's even more rare for a television character and uh in the role he's been given to do that for you so or a movie character to do that for you and uh it's just one of my favorite characters in anything ever it was it was so perfectly brought to life Mm. yeah it was and it it really i don't i feel like robin williams is a this is I mean, I think I made this comment about one of the earlier movies we were talking about, but I haven't seen all of his movies, but this has to be probably one of his best, just like acting performances, critical performances. Yeah, I'd say so. He, he take, cause not, but you know, it's not by any means a comedic movie, but everyone knows Robin Williams as a comedic actor and he carries that with him in a, in a certain way. That's not, uh, it doesn't diminish the the seriousness of the or the tone of the movie at all um it is really he like utilizes his comedy as a way to get in touch with the students Uh, i don't it's uh maybe robin williams isn't known as just like a comic it's more of just like he has his own personality you know it's it's kind of like the rock how the rock plays the same character in every movie robin williams will always be like the joyful the guy who's like all you know, like the inspiring you know character, really. Like yeah. he, he plays like the joyful role like all the time, um, and it's yeah. it's kind of like you know that he will be like the rock of the movie. You or not? Okay, now I'm not talking about Dwayne the Rock. I'm talking <laughs> about like the anchor. Like he is, 
Yeah, he's like. I'm uh, like, wait, hold on now. He's the glue. The you know rock, that he will rock. be the Dwayne Johnson no, of this no, film. No, the Rock is trying to be Robin yeah. Williams. <laughs> but yeah, he's like the glue of the movie. And uh, I mean, I don't know. I don't know what performance. Like, obviously, Robin Williams' performance was fantastic. But Neil also, like. Oh, my God. Like, there are just his, like, his performance throughout the whole thing is, is insane. Um, like, I don't know. Like, this felt just real. Um, it started a little fantasy like, you know, with just this private, rich, white, you know, whatever school that like, okay, we're, we're not into this world yet, but then (laughs) whenever you're caring about them and they actually make you care, like, it's just an emotionally riveting story that you're like locked in with and like, oh man, it was a ride. Oh, and the very concept of like having a a secret society where y'all just like read poetry and hit every time he was like convincing them like nah y'all need to think about what this is i don't need you to take your preconceived notions of what poetry means and just recognize that when you are a poet you are a romantic and like it it drips from our tongues like honey it's not we're not Mm. speaking these things like it's there's a certain uh fucking dopeness to, 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 to poetry that's like it 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 can bolster the way you feel about yourself and the way that uh, the way that you can express yourself. And uh, when they all recognized it as such, they were like, well, yeah, we gotta, we gotta do this shit. That's, this seems like it could be a really life changing thing as it was for them. Um, Which is really awesome. Yeah. They, they, they really do come about it in, um, what a, a and a genuine way too, because what's not more high school than like some high school is hearing about something that used to exist and bringing it back like that that's uh, that happens all the time and like this club specifically was a um, you know it's 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 a good message about friendship in a lot of ways. There's some I, I saw some stuff when I was looking around online about it about how Dead Poet Society has a subtext is like a um, like has a gay subtext that says like basically like they were all sort of gay. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> hmm. No, it's it it would be interesting to uh interesting to consider. And like that's that's another thing that I, I multiple times throughout the movie I, I thought about, but it's like for this movie made in nineteen eighty nine, is that what they're gonna do? And like there are multiple characters in this movie where it felt like that's probably the the sort of allegorical context they're kind of going for. Um, yeah, every time like, I try to think back, like uh, whenever these movies were coming out and put myself in the mindset of like someone who's watching this on release time, like it still boggles my mind that like I was alive whenever gay marriage was legalized. So like this movie's like way before that, you know? Yeah. So like that, like putting my like yourself in the mindset of back then is just kind of wild and like a crazy thought experiment. But like, I don't know this movie, like is time. Like this will be yeah, like this a timeless is, movie. Like it it's the reason why it is so good. And like that it is probably held to the, you know, critic critical review that it is, is like no matter what's going on in the world, you know, this will always be a story. This is just a human story, just a very, very human story. And, mm. Yeah, it'll be a forever, like, I don't know. This movie, like, I guess not a very rewatchable movie. You know, you don't want to instantly go back and watch it again, you know, just because it is devastating. One you know you'll probably see again. Yes, it, it's uh, one that you have to watch again. You can't yeah. just watch it once, um, even though you don't want to, you know, experience that again. But, like, all the good parts of the movie, like, you'd be going back for. Like, um, I love when they're out in the courtyard and he made three of them walk. You know, and they started all different and then they all lined up and then everyone starts clapping and, you know, he comes out and he's like, yeah, all of you started in your different steps. You know, you didn't know what the fuck you're thinking. So you, you took blah, blah, blah. And then you're decisive and you walked fast, whatever. And then he's like, then you all conformed. And, you know, if you're asking if you would do the same thing out here, then ask yourselves, why were you clapping? In the first, you know, and it was just like a, a poof, you saw like the kids' minds be blown, you know, right there. And I don't know, like his a lectures were always. Non conformity. Mm. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and he's, 
you going to join us? Or whoever was like standing out, you know, on his own. He's like, um, I'm exercising my right not to walk. And he's <laughs> like, thank you for proving my point for me. And you're like, whatever. Like, um, but man, yeah, all of his lectures were just fantastic. And I think he got it the spirit of what like education really should be. And one of my one of I know, Joe, you've had this gripe with the education system overall is that it doesn't seem like it's exactly the healthiest exercise in free thought. Um, mm-hmm. And that's what Mr. Keating made the entire thing about was uh, don't like do what I'm telling you to do, but do it the way you want to do it. Don't do it the way that I'm telling you you have to or that any book is telling you you have to. Mm-hmm. Fuck what Mr. Pritchard has to say about the scale of what makes great mm-hmm. poetry. Great poetry is feeling it. Great peer, great poetry is knowing it's great poetry. Fuck, fuck, fuck whatever else. The sad thing is that whenever he was describing that introduction and the whole graph thing, whatever, like it was making sense to me because I'm just a very mathematical person, you know? And I'm like, I was like, hmm, this is actually like a, a decent way to measure poetry. And then he just rip it out, rips, you know, and I'm like, oh. Fuck. I'm like, I'm, thank you. I'm like, you know what? Like, God, I was thinking that this is actually a decent way to measure because, like, you can take the area and literally have a number that, you know, you can literally see if a poem is better than, but like that. Yeah. The whole point is that you can't measure that shit, you know? How can you measure that? How can you graph a poem? What? Like, that just doesn't make sense. So, like, Awful oh, ironic no. that we will be giving a rating and review of this movie later on and be sticking it on a, a list of numbers. That's true. <laughs> a poem, a, a poem versus a movie, though. Um, a movie's know, work. Art, I don't I, know. I guess it is just art. Yeah, you're right. Um, nah, but we, still, I think uh, I think for the purposes of what we're trying to execute, it makes sense. No, uh, we have to we, abandon it from we, this point forward. We abandon the ranking system, and we're just and like, we just where do you feel like it falls movie. on the general yeah. list, man? Do you, this was do you like a... it more than this? Yeah. <laughs> we, we we've attempted we've attempted to categorize art, I think, but it, we still maintain its subjective status. You know, it's of all, course, of course, it's it's and that's all. I don't know. There, yeah, I mean. Who the fuck are the Who the fuck are the Grammys? Who the fuck are the Academy Awards? Like, they don't know what they're talking about. What What is What is any of the, like? It was Was uh, a fucking what, what won best movie of the year last year? The uh, The Green Book. The Green. Yeah, the Green Book. Was the Green Book good or was it boring? <laughs> boring as fuck. I haven't seen the Green Book. I'm sure I Ma- Mahersh- it's, uh, Mahershala it's a Ali. It's, Mahershala Ali has a stellar yeah. performance and stuff, but it's a little uh, man, it's not a great movie. Really, you didn't think it was all that? Nah, not for real. It's just got like weird notes of like the like a white savior complex sort of thing going yeah. on, and I'm not yeah. I'm not digging it. Um, but yeah, uh. Dead Poet Society, though none of that. Not even a black person in the movie. Um, yeah. <laughs> that's, Damn, that's it a, was 1989. Nineteen eighty nine uh, at this rich prep school, this rich white boy prep school and so, stuff. And the the head of the school certainly didn't strike me as the most open minded of men, or should I say, not racist. Uh, he definitely seemed racist and homophobic and everything that goes with it. Yeah. Yeah, that 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 pretty much gets it. Um, yeah, what did that dad? That dad, I feel like he played in something else. Um, I feel like I like it. Kurtwood Smith. That '70s show. He's a Red Foreman. Oh my God! Thank you. Oh, you did it again. I had one of those where I recognized him from something. I just didn't know what. Ah, it just. Thank you. Oh, now Dumb I can ass. sleep. Oh, thank yeah, you. Yeah, yeah, that's him. He plays the same guy. Um, essentially. Uh, I think Red Foreman was a little bit more forgiving than this guy, which is unbelievable considering Red Foreman was one of the biggest asshole dads in TV history. Um, <laughs> Damn. Mm, thank you. Okay. That puts my mind at ease. But yeah, yes, now I can just think of how much I hate him in this movie. Um, oh, he's the worst. Um, yeah. And th- this is another one of those like sadly real elements about this movie is that like, we got notes of this back with like the breakfast club too, in a different way with, uh, Brian Johnson's character and, uh, or Anthony Michael Hall's character and Emilio Estevez's character with the way their dads pressured them to do this, do that, 
you can't fuck up. Mm-hmm. And, you know, uh, we, we explore that again here to an ever, even greater extent as uh, we expand beyond one evening in a uh, <laughs> in a detention. We, we kind of get mm. a, a, lo- a long a long standing story here. Yeah, it was uh, like, I don't know, every. This I don't know, it's like this movie kept jumping back and forth between like adventure like whenever they would go out you know like with their club and like it was just fun you know and then it would get like super serious and you'd be like oh fuck like like damn like i'm I'm really feeling for these boys which is just insane because the first 10 minutes you really don't give a shit like about any of them and then now you're like i'm you're crying for some of them you know like uh oh yeah and then i you know there's the whole storyline of uh the love at first sight you know oh my god that's my favorite storyline in the movie Mm -hmm. knocks over streets whole like the way he was he embraced what (laughs) mr keating had to say immediately and was like you know what he's right i've fallen in love and there's only one way for me to express it um (laughs) no yeah knox overstreet was such a was such a fun fun character and uh definitely the one in this in this movie that i related to the most Mm. uh like far and away as far as like how like I remember my college, uh, not my college, my high school experience, and how I generally felt in high school. Um, I was like, you know what, I I, I kind of feel my boy knocks over street here. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he, he uh, I don't know. He was, what was what was his uh? He read that poem to her, and he came back, and he's like, "What'd she say?" Back to, yeah, nothing. nothing but, but I read I did it. To it. Her. Yeah, but I did it. And he just walked away. Seize the day. Carpe D. You know, he's just running yeah. through the halls, like screaming, like, oh, man. It, <laughs> it's, it is crazy how they really did. Like, every character, you had, like, a little thing that you, like, you could pull out and love about them. And, like, you know, Knox's was a little, a bigger part of the movie. But, like, you know, like, some boys, like, making a radio. You know, and then they're up on yeah. the roof just jamming out together. Like whenever they were dancing, one of them had the like headphones on. Whatever, that was sick. Like, right. I don't and know. Like, that's kind of a. It's it's like a. It's a very profound lesson about poetry. At the same time, like through all of that, which is through all of the repression that these like children were facing, poetry is the thing that was able to get them to like really like take hold of their personality and their their identity and their self and everything. Mm beautiful it really it's like one of the most it's it's definitely one of the most powerful mediums there is as far as uh writing is considered uh if not the most powerful like i don't think i've ever read anything that quite resonates with me in a novel the way something might have in a poem you know what i'm saying like there's just something that hits a little harder about about the rhythm about the about the cadence about these by the organization of the word on the page, just everything looks, everything is satisfying about the poetry. Mm-hmm. It's like poetry is everything you can get in a movie or a book, but concise and packed down. It's like just the most important parts of everything. It's like just, it's like the nectar, you know, like it's like just the sweet spot of, of art, you know, it's mm-hmm. like, Everything that's good just in one little place, you know, and that you, you don't need much. It doesn't take much time to to read, you know, just a single poem. And it's like you get everything you could out of a novel or a book. Yeah. And uh, like, I don't know, this movie, I don't think another movie that I've ever watched had me thinking just about life in general as much as this movie. Like I was thinking about how I was going to like raise my kids and like how I would never – you know, lay out their lives for them and like how I'm, you know, like the, like those thoughts, you know, like legitimate, like, oh my God, whenever I find my wife, you know, how am I going to first, you know, approach what's going to be my first interaction? Is it, you know, am I going to, I don't know, but, uh, like this movie was, I don't know, impactful. Like that's, this is a legitimate, like could legitimately say life-changing movie like after this movie you just kind of think about things in a different way yeah um and yeah i don't know this is this is high up on my list um for sure i absolutely fucking love it yeah i I just love this quote from mr keating we don't read and write poetry because it's cute 
we read and write poetry because we are members of the human race Mm -hmm. and the human race is filled with passion and medicine, law, business, engineering. These are noble pursuits and necessary to sustain life, but poetry, beauty, romance, love, these are what we stay alive for. And I was like, God damn, you know what? He's, he's motherfucking right. You know what I'm saying? His lectures in in themselves were poetry. Like, he was – it was just dripping off his tongue, you know, like poetry, straight up. Like He's saying poetry has no form. Poetry's form is the most organic thing there is. It is us. It's flesh and blood. We are poetry. We are poetry. Mm, when they all stood up on the desk. You know, he stood up on the desk. Captain, you gotta right see, Captain. You got to see the world. Oh, I wasn't even talking about that. That's even way, a way more powerful moment than – but whenever he he stood up on the desk for the first mm-hmm. time, and then all of them got in line and and did it, you know, after. Don't them, just like, step right down. Stay up there. Look around for a second. Like that's. Mm. Oh yeah the 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 whole <laughs> oh captain my captain part was it like just these little things that were added in there, you know, just to just to break you down even more. Basically, they they were throwing in these like cute little things that they would say to each other just to just to make it even more devastating in the end. But like. Man, what a I don't know, this was just a beautifully crafted movie. Like the pacing, like the it started out like weird and you had no idea where it's going, but then like it really just narrows and focuses. Twenty, and... like twenty five minutes in, you're like, bam. From that point on, you're like in. Um and man, I don't know. An emotional roller coaster, that's for sure. Um Oh yeah. Oh for sure. And I remember that first scene where Neil runs into the to the room to be with to like talk to Todd and I love Todd and Neil's uh Neil's rapport and just kind of like Todd not opening a shell to anyone but Neil and Neil kind of being the one who can get to him a little bit um but when he comes in and he's like I found it I know what I'm going to do he's like I'm going to be an actor and he's like the cam- the camera work they used when he was like running around the room and they're that, like mm-hmm. it just stays in the center but it follows them and I think they utilized it again when Keating was trying to get Todd to go like just feel it feel the moment tell me mm-hmm. what you're thinking and, and oh when Todd went and like was just going off like mm. dude like yeah and he said like and if you don't think I know that this assignment scares the hell out of you you know like. Like, I know this assignment is scaring the hell out of you, but you're doing it, you know? And and he just went up there, killed it. And everyone, like, the classmates, they laughed at him at first, but then at the end, they were just like, damn, dude. They, like, just clapped for him, like, straight up. Like, it was like, damn. And I don't, it was, man. I don't what know, so you, many. Madman. Mm. <laughs> yeah. Ooh, wow. You you may be a po- you may be a poet or I don't know what he with something. a stare that pounds my brain. Oh, that's <laughs> excellent. Now give me action. Make him do something. <laughs> His hands reach out and they choke me. That's it. Wonderful. Like the way he's just like, mm. go ahead, keep going. I just uh, I just love that. Man. It, and all the time he's mumbling. What's he mumbling? Mumbling truth. Like, God damn. <laughs> okay. Getting getting, it was, this kid, getting this kid into his bag. The whole concept of like that Rob, like Robin Williams, like Mr. Keating, he did this all before. You know, he went through the same thing these boys were going through. He, you know, created that club, um, like did all of that. Like, and now, you know, he, he puts the book down on Neil's desk to like pick up the mantle, like to carry it on. And like you just see Neil open it up, like read the opening, like understand that like Mr. Keating gave it to him. And you're just like, oh, like, oh my God. Like, it's just so... I don't know, so cool, like the whole secret society aspect, and like, oh, like, man, it, magnificent. This movie was, I don't know, like I, I can't pick out a bad part. Like, I can't think of a thing it's, I hate about this. Movie. It's just really well constructed. Because I mean, even as you're saying that, I'm thinking of how that, like, its message is sort of um, saying, like this, this idea of tradition or what gets passed down or what happens generationally uh, can be subverted and that happens in the form of the dead poet society whereas Mm. you know they're given these pre-formatted paths to success in life uh dead poet society offers a a a dueling path in a way a, a, a way of criticizing i guess that very assumption that you that like being successful in life is entailed by these paths that you have laid out for you 
and no one challenges that idea more than uh, Nuwanda. Mm-hmm. Um, Char- Charlie, or I think that was his name, Charlie, Charles. Mm, yeah. Uh, you want, yeah, yeah. In the yeah, whole, no, he, uh, the the tribal pattern painted on his chest to make him virility. He makes yeah, yeah. Him, feels like he can <laughs> feels like he can just devour women, like swoon the wor- or like what was, he said, like to swoon women, or like uh, yeah. like there's we don't do poetry for this. We do it for blank, blank, and to swoon women or something like that. And then and that's swoon. all he heard. You know, he took that and he's like. To swoon women, you know, like that's why I'm joining the Dead Poet Society. Women yeah. and like whatever. But, <laughs> yeah, I guess if there was any one thing about the movie that's like, eh, it's it's it is the adaptation of uh, their them kind of uh, appropriating Native American culture and kind of butchering it at points. Uh-huh. Um, that that would be like it though. Like that was like the one thing that was like, and and even in those moments they were trying to non-conform they were trying to break out of their break out of their shit um so it's like Mm. it served a purpose in the film but was the purpose worth it etc etc um Mm -hmm. yeah i uh uh, that that last just the last whole sequence where they all had to go and meet with the principal and uh you know Nuanda takes a beating on the ass and uh he's he's walking back to his room and they're like so Charles did you what happened are you going to you going to tell and he's like damn it the name's Nuanda mm. <laughs> I, was like, I was like my god fuck yes man let's oh go god. like couldn't have, couldn't have said it any better you know like I, I wasn't expecting that, you know, him to say, I, I was mm-hmm. expecting him to be like, of course I wouldn't say anything, you know, like, of course, but like that little, like, ah, that, and that's what this movie just did. Well, like it, you couldn't really guess where it was going next. That's for like, you kind of, it kind of kept you on your toes. And even for, like some of the storylines that were more predictable, um, they kind of had a little twist to them. Um, like, I don't know. There wasn't really anything that was very easily predicted in this movie. I don't think because, that last sequence there, I thought Neil was going to kill his father and not himself. That's the vibe I was getting initially mm. um, was that he was, like, making this whole performance, you know, out of it setting his, like, the crown, like, on the window, opening up the windows and everything. You thought like, it was, like, you thought it was so, his uh, Joaquin Phoenix Joker moment. Yeah, like, at first I'm like, oh, he's, like, he's going to kill his dad, like, straight up. This dude just sucks because that's what I was wanting. I'm like, yes, kill your dad. Like, do it. <laughs> yes, Let's go. Yes, kill your dad. But then <laughs> – but then okay i know but then like oh, yeah, it's yeah. just the alternative is so much worse because like yeah. when i finally realized what he was doing like i was like oh he's not gonna kill his dad i'm like fuck i was like damn it i was like no this is not where i wanted this movie to go like no not no, in the no. way that and, and the way like, that they they like didn't utilize any of it like mm. instead of instead of it being you heard it you saw it or something no we cut to their we cut to his dad waking up going i just i heard something what was that what was that sound and it's like oh fuck and like the 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 lack of a noise there the lack of sight is like as much as much an indication that it definitely just happened as anything else was and it's like god that was so well done Mm -hmm. and the way that they like slowly go room to room trying to figure out what the what the hell's going on and then like uh Kurtwood Smith's acting in that scene is superb, and so so is the so is the mother's. Uh, the way that they oh my god, uh, dude, yeah, that like, shit was heart wrenching. Oh, um, like even even though you hated that dad so much, like in that moment you were just like, oh fuck, like the whole like, he's gonna like, be fine, he's okay, he's okay. It was like oh god, like fuck. Oh, yeah. Man, I, I mean. Good. I I love like if I watched this movie two years ago, I don't think I would have like allowed myself to cry as much. I, mm. I uh I've just recently like opened myself up to crying to movies because like <laughs> it just makes the experience better. Like if you're supposed to cry mm. and like if the movie's powerful enough to make you cry, like I don't know, it just enhances the experience in my opinion. Oh one hundred percent. And like this movie, like oh my god. Like it was just there were t- some parts where it was like 
not a point in the movie that you were supposed to cry, but just I was like thinking of like a previous storyline and then like adapting it to like my own life. And I'm just like, oh my God. God this damn, this shit is so moving. Good. I'm just like, uh, damn, this movie's just good. Um, but yeah, like. No, yeah, I feel that. I feel that for sure. And like the way that Todd reacts to like to, to hearing the news, like they, they wake him up and they're like, Neil's dead and they like walk out they walk out there together and he's like nope he wouldn't have done this his father killed him his father killed him it had to be that it just had to be that I was like oh my god like I, it was already bad and then like that happens and you're like <laughs> <laughs> yeah they I mean yeah I, just, I distinctly remember the first time that I watched this movie I, I was in a similar position as Joe I was just like oh Dead Poets Society of Poetry, it'll be, you know, Robin Williams uplifting poetry. Hurrah. And then mm-hmm. you're like, Yop. Oh, this is shit is about life. Yop. <laughs> like, yeah, Yop. Damn. Yes. Oh, I forgot about Yop. And he, Yop. yes. Okay. Um, uh, it, cause I love watching with subtitles because I would have not have caught this if I didn't watch with subtitles, but like, there were a few Yops. Like after Throughout he gave that lecture, yeah, like yeah. there were a few, like uh, when Knox came back, like uh, or like whenever he was going through the halls, yop, he was yopping through the halls, yeah, like, um, and like I wouldn't have caught that if I didn't have subtitles on, but like just those, I don't know, it just like they really made a connection between the students and and Mr. Keating or Dr. Mm. Keating, like like they just you, showed like, how much he impacted uh, their the way they think, you know, and. uh God, it was fantastic, and the way like the the de- like the actual like dean of the school was like at this age, fuck no, they can't have free thought. They need to be thinking about what we need them to think about. Like fuck, fuck whatever you're saying. They can't be thinking for themselves. They had the like, lunch conversation, yeah. and he was, you know, he called himself a realist or whatever, and then he comes back in to teach the class, and then they're like the introduction. Oh, it's ripped out, sir, and he's like what about the parts on realism? And they're like, oh, we didn't read those. <laughs> you know? That. Yeah, we skipped that. Like, it was just a funny little tidbit they added in there. Like, just a another fuck you to the whole, you know, like... Mr. Keating, they made us sign it. <laughs> we never would have... I know. I know, Todd. I know. Like, I was like... Oh, God. <laughs> yeah, oh, Captain, my captain. He just goes, thank you, boys. Thank you. <laughs> like, are you kidding me? Like, oh, my God. They just <laughs> knew, like, they crafted that ending perfectly like oh, oh my god to it's hit so every, good oh my god to hit every oh, yeah. bone like perfect like oh man like this is i don't know like it's weird to put it as like a a favorite movie of all time because it's not like a Enjoyable. a spider-man no way home that like i freaking you know came out of that theater like ecstatic and like oh my god yeah like spider-man but like i'm coming out of this you know why it impacted you many tissues were needed for this movie i've never needed to grab a tissue for a movie because i've been crying in like my nose like i needed tissues that's the first time it's ever happened for me um and like and i mean i'm thinking too like this is a daring script for 1989 87 86 whenever first started getting worked on well 89 is when it comes out but like for the 80s this is a pretty daring script like and it's Mm. it it's more impactful when you consider that mental health is like not really a subject of conversation in major circles until at least dead poet society brings it up in a certain way. I think humans have, haven't gotten comfortable talking about mental health until the pandemic, because we've all realized that we were all sad as shit. And like, we were all, you know, like now, like there's been a change, but still it's not even like a comfortable topic, like talking about, which is like, it's just cra- like that's crazy. Like no, yeah, I remember. Um, I remember all throughout high school. Like I, f- I feel like it was like really when we were like in high school that that like really started to shift. Like it was like, okay, this is definitely a problem we need to address. And then it just uh, it, it kept becoming more and more pre- prevalent. And then the pandemic hits, and like everyone was like, oh fuck, I've been inside for two <laughs> weeks. I'm sad. Uh, <laughs> it was like a, a collective depression. You know, it's like, I, I'm curious to know, like, what this time period will be, like, called in the history books, you know? Like, whenever this is all said and done. Like, if it's just going to be, 
the pandemic? Because, like, no way. Like, we're calling it the pandemic, but, like, that's good just because it's our pandemic. Yeah. But, like, it no, could be, oh like, this could be the Great Depression 2, you know? Like, uh, <laughs> the sequel. Yeah, like, uh, I don't know. Like, I- I'm just curious on what this will be called um, in the history books. But, yeah, crazy oh. that, like, the Great <laughs> the Great Depression 2, Electric Boogaloo. <laughs> Uh, two uh, K nineteen COVID edition. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <sighs> uh, no, yeah. What a time to be alive, huh? But no, yeah. That and another thing that this movie had that like the soundtrack has been on the whole mm. time in the mm. background over here. That oh, shit no. soothing. No. Uh, just like the soft like flute noises most of the time. It's just like. Like it's just, it's just nice and melodic, and just it never, it never intensifies. It never gets mm-hmm. more sad. It's just. I right actually had sad. this thought during the movie. I was, uh, it was a part where I was crying, and then I'm like, and then I hear the music, and I'm like, oh wait, this music is also just sad as shit. So then I like, it was like even like uh, usually the movie itself isn't sad enough to get you crying, but then the music puts the you music in a place to where you're like the effect. Yeah up for it but but this movie it was almost like i'm crying from the story first and then the music hits and then i'm like oh like and then it's just even more you know (laughs) but but, uh oh you're like i didn't i didn't think about the soundtrack until now but it really just amplifies yeah it just amplifies you know everything but not overwhelmingly nah yeah this is uh the first song on its the soundtrack is called Carpe Diem. Mm. And uh God damn it. That shit go up. If you need study music, Dead Poet Society is just the is just the shit for you. Um just don't think about the context of the movie at all. <laughs> um No, yeah, this uh God, I fucking love this movie. But uh it's weird to think about how I would enjoy like on an enjoyment scale on like a five star enjoyment scale. Cause we've, we've taken down points for enjoyment for like, like just like horror movies, like the shining. We ticked, we ticked an enjoyment factor down just a little bit because we were like, well, obviously like I didn't exactly love the way I felt at points. And, uh, that's kind of where I'm at here. I obviously didn't love the way I felt at some points. Uh, but nevertheless, it was, it's a it was different. so impactful that it's different. You know, like, yeah. it's like, it's not a, it is a sad cry, but it's more of a happy cry. Like, it's more of like a reflective cry. You know, it's, it's a, <clears throat> it's I mean, a good it is cry a sad to have. Cry. Yeah, it, it, it is, is a, it's cry. definitely, I'm just trying to code it, you know, um, but like, it's a good cry to have. Um, True. Like, it's not, it's not like, your own problems and you're you're legitimately just crying because you're like legitimately sad in your own real life it's like you know this is just a movie at the end of the day and like right you know so it's a good cry um it is a good cry you're right you're but right. enjoyment is the only category that like i'm up in the air because the other two i'm like yeah good you know all there but i don't know like it is just a weird um it, so dynamic for this movie i guess enjoyment wise but think of think of enjoyment this way though so are you familiar with the definition of the word sublime i am give give me and the folks a reminder sublime sublime refer well i mean i guess i'm i'm interested in what your idea of it is like a minimal like uh, something that's like i don't know it couldn't like you don't know how it could possibly get better than this. This is sublime. Oh, that's what that. Means. Oh, that's okay. how I take. That's how I hear. That's how I define sublime. That's a, that's yeah, and and I think that in a, in a in a way that 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 is true. Sublime is in in literary tradition historically known as sort of an entanglement with the most extreme of emotions, um, which is not always happy. And a lot of people think in order for something to be 
uh, perfect in order for something to be sublime. It has to have both uh, uh, joy and fear. It has to have mm. it has to play on like sort of your willingness and uh, to 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 join with it and like sort of an apprehension about it because it causes like yeah I don't know there's a more developed definition in there somewhere. But... Okay, actually I like that. Like maybe the enjoyment rating is more of just how connected you felt to the movie, right? Because yeah. because that's, you know, it's not really fair to just be like, oh, how happy was I during this movie? Because that's right. not what this movie was trying to point. do. That's not what the point is. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, so I guess, you know, and okay, earlier we were joking about changing our whole rating system. But like maybe we legitimately change the enjoyment to just how well we connected with the movie. That's how like we think about it moving forward. And it's well, kind and of I like will, a tribute to this movie. I will generally say – like I will generally say that's kind of how we've handled yeah. it anyway. But now um, now it makes not sense. not to such specific yeah. terms. Yeah. Hmm. I, at least yeah, that's kind how I've a... kind of handled it. In ter- but well, we also haven't dealt with a movie like this with this subject mm-hmm. matter that gets this sad. So it's like we haven't really yeah. had to think about enjoyment in terms of being sad. Um it's a testament to this movie. You know, we're like thinking of our rating system. You know, we were joking about it earlier saying that let's rid it all and not rate any movies at all. But like we're kind of – we're thinking of our enjoyment rating as like a Dr. Keating would. Like like how connected were you to this thing? You know, like uh, I don't know. And if that's it's the a, case, if that's if that's the case, then my enjoyment almost has to be a, a 4.9, 4.95, 5. Like, like it's <laughs> it's in that range. I can't say that I've connected to another movie more. Like Star Wars, I connect to in a different way, just right. because I love the universe and I like I want to be in there. Mm-hmm. But like this movie was just a legitimate connection, like with real life, and like that's a whole different thing. Like I don't, I don't know if another movie in my life has made me feel more inspired and invigorated after watching um so i'm i'm def 4.9 is the floor yeah yeah for yeah. like for every Better. like ranking in this in my opinion like uh i don't know like i'm i think i'm comfortable giving a 4.9 at least in enjoyment so yeah i'm there too all right then i say we just we bump that bad bitch up to a five if that's all we're, we're if that's all what we're really feeling Let's see. The only other fives in enjoyment are Raiders of the Lost Ark, Star Wars, and Godfather. And that just makes sense, you know? Like, this this belongs That's with that, that crowd. That tier. It's it in belongs, that tier. yeah. I'm, I'm comfortable giving it a five in enjoyment. And I mean, right. genre. For the genre. For what this movie was <laughs> trying to accomplish, I think it did it perfectly um well, how, how do we define this genre like what, what are okay we fair uh drama like is it just a drama is that we is that how Let's we see. i guess on imdb it says wow it says drama and comedy it actually well, puts comedy that's there are elements of I it that true. are comedic and like the yeah and it wasn't comedic to the point where it took away from the drama which is exactly what you want out of a movie with this subject matter, you don't want it to be too funny or else it uh, lessens the impact. Um, at least it can. Mm. Um, gosh. And, and in that regard, like it's, it's, it's probably a five in genre too. Like it, it's probably getting its job done exactly how it intended and exactly to the capacity it could have. So I mean, this whole time we've been talking about how like, the story was just perfectly crafted and how we didn't care about these characters at all. And eventually we did, we cared about all of them. And like for what it was trying to accomplish, like this did, it was over, it was, you know, it over accomplished like Hmm. what it was trying to do in my, for like a movie, which is insane. This is just a movie, you know, that like we're legitimately thinking of our lives about and like, it's getting us to this conversation, you know, which is insane. So yeah, it's very contained and focused, I think, too. Like, it's to the point. Damn, this is a... This is... Now, as a film, you know, I guess this could be the only one where it could 
fall. Like this is the only category where it could fall. Like, and it, it uh, won't and be like still... this is gonna this is gonna be a top five movie. Yeah. Like this is this is gonna be a top five in ranking, uh like for sure. Because I like last week was my neighbor Totoro and we gave that a four point nine as a film. I it's 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 a four point nine two on average, so like yeah, I'd say this is every bit as good a movie as My Neighbor Totoro. And if we I mean, give like, it a zero in the film, it already beats Mash, um, God and all the most Taxi Driver. If we give it a zero <laughs> as a film, so yeah, this movie's doing pretty good already. Um, but no, I'm comfortable going. I'm comfortable going four point nine. Like, because I don't, I don't think I would say anything about it. Like, I know it's like a weird comparison to draw, but like, I don't think anything about it stood out in a way that was like, wow, this is just so much more well-crafted than my neighbor Totoro. Like I can't, I can't comfortably put it point one above that. It it doesn't feel genre defining any way. It it just kind of feels like a standalone. It feels like a well-written movie. Like, Mm -hmm. and there, there's a lot about that. Wow. So that, um, makes it an almost perfect movie of 4.97. Um, and that puts it, my neighbor Totoro was a four point nine two, so it is point zero five above my neighbor Totoro, which feels about about right. Uh, it is above Raiders of the Lost Ark, which was a four point nine three. Um, and Star Wars is a five, so yeah. I mean you know can't really do much there. <laughs> uh, the Godfather is a four point nine three, so this is above the Godfather as so well. So this is like new top top one besides star wars this is second yeah so this is either first if we're looking at it that way you know as just taking star wars out because obviously star wars is going to be a five out of five for us (laughs) Um, that's just how it is yeah it's kind of Um, it's kind of null and void whenever we're in this discussion Uh, but yeah this this would be the new king because we we referred to godfather as like the king beforehand um mm -hmm. so this is the new the new king if we decide you know um, if if we're comfortable with that, there was something that Tavares said a second ago that made me that made me think about the genre rating a little bit more. Where he said it's not genre defining, and if something's not genre defining, it probably isn't a five out of five. Okay, that is fair because um, every time we've given a five out of five, we say it's like the gold standard of that genre, and like mm-hmm. nothing, no other movie could do this basically um that and is there fair. are movies that make an emotional impact that are also dramas with a little bit of comedy uh so that is fair um i i'd be comfortable going more in the 4.75 4.8 range for the genre okay if we go with 4.75 that averages out to a 4.88 then which puts it below my neighbor Totoro. Um, a four point eight looked a little better. Makes it a okay. That's still a little bit below my neighbor Totoro. It's four point nine. Um, my neighbor Totoro being a four point nine two. So I mean, Give it's me like four point eight five. Four point eight five ties it with my neighbor Totoro as a four point nine two. And that's just like I. I it's, Right, right about there. Because enjoyment, that's like locked. That's a locked five right there. After we've five. had that combo, I, I just needed to consider the the true essence of our genre rating. Uh, so yeah, this like if, if we're just going, did it do what it wanted? Then it's always a five out of five. So I guess if my neighbor tutorial was five, this is now tied for five. So there's a our top five includes six movies now. Um, mm. That makes sense. So, yeah, I guess. If, if, I mean, our top five, our top five besides Star Wars, we'll call it. Um, fair. One, two. I mean, are we are we yeah. all in agreement? Do y'all do y'all want to revisit any of these numbers either? I think tying it, like with my yeah, Toro, like feels right. I, I when that. y'all when you told me it was that far above Raiders and the Godfather, I had to rethink it. I was like. I like this movie. But okay. It's, it's not Raiders and the Godfather. <laughs> so 4.92 for My Neighbor Totoro and Dead Poets. Raiders is 4.93. 0.01. So Raiders is just 
that much better, which yeah, does make yeah, sense. Like, I, 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 when you said it was 0. 0.03 or four above Godfather and Raiders, I was like, and go, yeah, Godfather like, again, right. a 4.93, like tied with Raiders. So like our, Oh, our top five has two tied move, like two pairs of tied movies, which is interesting. Um, Hmm. But yeah, okay. Like I, Raiders might... and Godfather, I would put it just barely below those two movies. <laughs> and that's what we have. Like uh yeah. And this is this is a testament to the rating system because like we took and a testament to this movie. We've hold we've usually gone whatever we went with, we went with. I went, you know what? Does that feel right? Is, 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 does that feel right to me within? Is Dead Poets point zero four better than The Godfather and Raiders of the Lost Ark? Hmm. Hmm. No. Yeah, quantifying gets into some uh, murky territory, huh? <laughs> it does. It does. But uh, as long as we can uh, ultimately feel good about it, I'm going to feel good about it. And generally, that's that's usually what we end up trying to do is... Wherever it feels right on the list, we usually make it end up there. Um, right. I mean, there's only four movies that had a five out of five in enjoyment. Um, and, I mean, we always talk about the other three. Godfather, Star Wars, Raiders. Like, uh, I mean, it's in good company, this movie. Even though, like, it is below them, it's barely below them. Like, this movie is still, like... It's up. It like it deserves to be in company with Raiders and, and the Godfather. But like, oh, absolutely. Um. So yeah, I, I I'm comfortable with where it's, where it's at right now for sure. Well, fuck yeah, fuck yeah, indeed. Oh. All right. So that's another four point nine two. That's two four point nine twos in a in a row. Two weeks in a row. Um. That's pretty impressive. Uh. Eighty eight and eighty nine. But yeah, that concludes the eighties for us. Is the eighties an average score? Of a four point two seven, which the seventies was a four point three five. So Ooh, I guess a little dip, step down a little, dip, but barely a little dip, but barely. Um, but I think that's due to um, it's definitely due to Spaceballs being a two point one seven. Yep. Um. So you know, and Scarface ended up true. ended up not being too yeah, too hot on our scale and. No taxi driver was in the seventies, so never mind. So, but yeah, it's not interesting. A... Right now, we're on a pace of uh, two five out of five enjoyments per decade, mm-hmm. um, with Star Wars and Godfather, <laughs> and then Raiders and Dead Poets. Uh, hmm. Interestingly enough, that could be the yeah. That could. I mean, are there how many? Do you expect more or fewer five out of fives? I, I that sounds about right to me. You know, like I I I wouldn't want too many of them. Like I mean, obviously I would. Like the more I'm enjoying movies, the more fun I'm having. But like in terms of this, the context of this list, it's nice to be a little bit more critical and have have those that stand as stand above the rest in a certain mm-hmm. way. Right. Hmm. Yeah. This this was a good decade. Looking back at it all. Um, yeah, and you know we'll be able to reflect on it even more in our uh, in our awards ceremony, the Penny Bloom nineteen eighties Penny Bloom Film Awards, uh, which uh, are going to be fun. Most legitimate no Academy Award in the world. Yep, the highest the highest <laughs> award you can possibly get. Uh, obviously presented by me, Colton Robertson, and I was joined by Joseph George. Thank you very much, homie. Oh, thank you for having me. It's always a pleasure. Oh, it is always a pleasure to have you. And thank you, Tavares Pennington, for joining us for a good half of the 80s. Oh, yes. It was a pleasure. Thank you. For oh, it a, oh, it was a pleasure to have you. And I expect to have you back for 1990 as we are uh, visiting Martin Scorsese's Goodfellas. Ooh, that's 90? Uh, that's next? That's 90. Uh, that's, a, that's, a pretty, that's a pretty big one. It's been one I've been looking forward to for the whole fucking shit so far. I'm, I'm very excited to talk about Goodfellas. Another first watch for me. So. Ooh. Okay. Mm-hmm. Good thing you just watched The Godfather because <laughs> I'm interested to see how they play it. Because it's like they, they, they're in kind of – like I feel like there, there are people who are like Goodfellas people and then people who are like the Godfather people. Like they're like – Yeah, right. <laughs> hmm. Interesting. That might have to be another projector viewing, oh. uh, perhaps, perhaps. Uh, but uh, yeah, 
If you would, head to patreon.com slash Bloom where you'll find well over 20 hours of exclusive content at this point. Uh, updating that every week with a lot of content uh, to, to coincide with this Dead Poets episode. I have an episode about our uh, our high school teachers that uh, might have inspired us to a degree or didn't at all to a degree as well. There's there's We just kind of reflect on our high school experience after Dead Poets Society, and that'll be back a couple months, probably in the February range. Uh, on the Patreon, but you know, once you, once you sign up for the Patreon, you get the whole backlog of content and that's a whole bunch of content. Um, and then if you would head to Twitter, follow at Penny Bloom pod, where I will keep you updated on what the movie might be week to week. If, uh, if it were to change from what I announced on the podcast, uh, next week's is 1990s Goodfellas. And that will definitely remain the same, but if it were to change, You'd find out on Twitter at Penny Bloom Pod. Uh, follow on Instagram at Penny Bloom Podcast. Remember to rate and review on Apple Podcasts and Spotify. Share us with a fucking friend. And uh, remember, peace, love, and bloom. And yup. That was a good one. I was wondering. Where-